Welcome back, Cecilia. <clears throat> Thank you. I wanted to ask you, did you did you manage to uh, you know how we spoke about that at our last class? There's an issue. Did you manage to send a message, or did you do anything yes. about it? But yes, but I'm afraid he hasn't seen it because there's no response. He didn't, he, yes, he didn't answer back, and I saw him in a class during the weekend and I didn't dare join the class. Mm. I wasn't courageous enough. Uh, you think it might have been awkward. Oh that's okay. Uh, you know, just maybe I, he didn't even see it. Was it th from that's why, yes. Google, maybe he Google. didn't even see it. Yes, in Google. Google, Google there plus. were so there were so many Giovanni Sullo. Really? <laughs> yes. When I when I uh, wrote uh, when I Google Slovani Sulo, many Slovani Sulos appear. Mm -hmm. And I did uh, join the first one that apparently had a, a profile similar to his. Mm -hmm. So I just have to say something. Mm. Da. <laughs> that's fine, All that's right. fine. Go but on, I, on. but I, leave, I leave a, 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 a um, my mind's message, uh, what I had in mind, that I, uh, I apologize, but mm -hmm. I, am, uh, I am straightforward. I mean, I didn't, I didn't change my mind. I didn't change my mind. But one thing is to be nice, and another thing is to be superficial, but I'm not mm. superficial. I'm, I'm not going to change. I'm not going to change. Yeah, that's perfect because um, <clears throat> I totally understand, and I felt I felt I really understood where where you were coming from because you are <clears throat> a very sort of you know you have a pure soul. You can see that, and when you sense a bit of um, uh, is a possibility of you know, someone. Uh, you know, being hurt in any way, you would, you know, you would want to correct that. I mean, I would feel the same, you know. Because I didn't guess, get it whether he was flattering, whether he was joking, where I didn't really get it. Mm. Perhaps but, I should mm. have been wiser and let him mm. go. But, that no, would have okay. been this, the wisest thing. But as I'm not that wise <laughs> yet, I'm not that wise yet. Uh, I s put my foot in, mm. I stepped in, and that is not wise at all. So I have to apologize, and to apologize, I have to follow someone else's point of view. That's why I mm. ask you your point of view, and I appreciate it. Uh, That's okay. I strongly apologize. Any time. I mean, I'm always here. I'm always here as a, you know, as a colleague, as a friend, as you know. And I think, I think that person also uh, is uh, very humorous. You know, that like to joke. I like that. So, I like that. Yeah, which is a good thing. So I, I, I honestly don't think there was any um, hard feelings. You know. No, so. I so. <clears throat> so yeah. Anyways, um, okay. I'm glad you got that off your chest. Um, yes, Carlo. Hello. <laughs> how are you all? <laughs> Good. How are you? Welcome how are back. you? Good. Thank you. <laughs> How's your weekend? Uh, good. Good. It uh, it's raining since uh, Saturday. It's wonderful. Oh, you love the rain. Yes, but Madrid was very very dirty and. Mm. We needed rain. Um, and go good on. Mm -hmm. uh, Cecilia, I have a question. On Saturday, what happened with the classes? It was two classes. There wasn't teacher. Ah, you mean uh, James Peer? Yes. I don't know. I wondered too because uh, he was notified that he was going to teach, and the class was uh, empty. I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, Yes, and there wasn't a sign that someone else was going to take over or or anything different. It was mm -hmm. strange. 
Um, yes, I, I wrote in the chat, I, and I saw you in the chat too. Ah, mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. Someone else took me to take over, Alan. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> yes, tell them to take over. They told me. I don't know what <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I usually don't teach on the weekend. I don't know. Uh -huh. I don't know. But what I'm gonna, say. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be having uh, an extra class now in the evenings. And, uh -huh. uh, you told us that that might come. Uh, yeah. I'm so happy basically, for you. congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. Thanks. We try to get a bit more classes, you see, but it's uh, it's a bit tough now because there are so many more teachers now in you know, Klingo, and not only that, everyone ha has their own um, schedule. So whenever there are free free slots or spots during the day or during the week, and if they suit us or suit me during the daytime, uh, I'll try to take them. Uh, so. Actually, I've taken actually one of Sakina's. She used to do the evening one, so I'm taking that evening, and she wants to do. See, when I finish this class, she's gonna teach after mine. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm longing so she, to to join. So, so if you have time, to join her. She's gonna be on after this hour, mm -hmm. and she's gonna have. I think it's today. Yes, today is the beginning for her. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I I saw. So I could, I mean, I could have taken it, but I thought I'd, I'd rather not do three hours in a row. Maybe she wants to do have a break, and then she can do it after me. So yeah, we agreed to that, and I'm gonna do her evening class. So yeah, anyways, so you were supposed what what topic was it, anyways? The one on, on the Saturday that didn't happen. What was? I don't know. I it forgot was, it. I I let's see if I remember. About literature or what was? Wasn't it about a? Uh, was it literature? Maybe I think the topic so. of literature. Yes, I think it was literature, and the grammar. Let's see if I remember the grammar. But yes, uh, yesterday too is happening the same with other teacher. Yesterday and six hour PM is what the mm -hmm. what the same the same. At 6 p.m. Yes. happened the same thing happened with a, with a different yes. teacher. I don't know. I can't remember it. I mm. know two teacher you and uh, my tutor advisor is Paul mm -hmm. Ponce in Buenos Aires, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the rest are not so known for you me. Know me. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. What a pity. You yeah. know what happened to me once before yeah. the new Palingo. Uh, at this time. There was a teacher from the States, and he started uh, being absent for personal reasons. And I wrote to uh, to uh, the owner of the company. I think he's the owner, and he answered back. And uh, he finally they told me that he had personal reasons. Mm -hmm. to, but he was scheduled. And he mm -hmm. was absent for many classes. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, Benjamin. Benjamin is Benjamin the owner, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Ben, Ben, the one with the glasses. Yes. All right. Yeah, he's one of the. He's. I don't know if you know. He's one of the one that's actually on the video when you join the yes. website. Yes. 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 I it, wrote yeah. to him because it wasn't. Two classes. It was more than two classes that he had been scheduled, and he yeah. couldn't attend the. Uh, yeah, he's very busy. He's, he, I don't know if you know, but he's actually one of the owners. That's know. why. That's why yeah. I wrote yeah. to him. He's very, yeah, yeah. And he and he did answer to me that mm. he, they, they they didn't know that the classes were empty, and he he couldn't turn up, mm. and and that was that. I I knew that this teacher had kids. Young kids, mm -hmm. and I was worried that maybe one was sick or something. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, we have a new student, Samir. Yeah, Samira. Hello, Samira. Yes. Hi. Welcome. Nice to nice to see you. Thank you. This is the first time I have you in my class. Well, actually, maybe yeah, that's before, exact. before you were in sort of halfway in my class, you were chatting yeah. to us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome! That's great. Uh, we want to we want we want to hear something about you. Uh, let's let's have a brief intro. So, 
I'll, I'll briefly introduce myself, and then you can get to know, uh, you know, Cecilia and Coro as well. So basically, okay, uh, okay I'll start. I'm Australian, and um, originally, originally I'm from Bosnia, but I've okay. been living in Australia most of my life, and currently I'm in the UK. I'm here since the middle of last year, and um, actually I'm located in Northern Ireland, and that's part of the UK. And um, recently, before coming here, actually, I spent two years in Germany, uh, not Germany, Egypt. I was teaching English okay. in Egypt, yeah. And then uh, I spent some time in Germany as well when I was young, before going to Australia, uh, okay. about four, four and a half years. And uh, yeah, so I enjoy languages, learning uh, languages and speaking. Um, I like technology, um, you know, information technology, like computing and gadgets. And I like sports, uh, football in particular, or soccer. Yes. So, do you want to say something about yourself so we can get to know you a little bit? Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Tamira. And Zarfawi, <laughs> yeah, this is my last uh, my last name. Uh, I live. I'm from Algeria, Africa, and I live in uh, the United States, uh, in New Orleans. I study there, um, and to uh, to complete my college, I have to improve my English. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So that's why I'm here. Uh, I don't know what can I say else. <laughs> uh, so what are you studying? Uh, oh, uh, I study uh, medicine. Medicine? Mm -hmm. Yeah, medicine. So I don't know. I pronounce it in French, so I don't know if it's correct in English. Medicine. That's pronunciation. Yeah, yeah, that's medicine. Yeah. Medicine. Me medicine. Fine. Okay. Okay. So yeah, so I need to. I have uh, a speech uh, class, uh, and it's uh, very hard for me. So I need to improve my English, uh, especially my speaking English. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's why I'm here, and uh, I need to practice as much as I can. Awesome, awesome. That's great. Well, yeah. very, very nice to meet you. And uh, thank you very much for your introduction. That's great. So uh, before I move on to the others, how long have you been in, in the States or in New Orleans? Uh, uh, five ye years. Five years. Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you speak quite well. I mean, you have uh, pretty much an Amer American accent. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's why I feel, I don't know, but I feel like, because I didn't study English before, so I feel it's like um, there is a difference between your accent and what I uh, use to hear. Yes. Uh, because you're from Australia, right? Mm, yes, 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 that's right. So there is a difference, definitely. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I mean, I could try and put on an American accent, but it's not as good as yours, maybe. No, no. <laughs> yeah, but I can understand you. I hear each single word and each single letter uh, uh, much better than <laughs> my my listening in the United States. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I try to speak as clearly as I can, yeah. so my students can understand me. So it's like a mixture of you know, because see, the Australian accent is uh, quite unique and um, it's not as great, you know, as, as you might think. Uh, if you were to hear a, a, a native Australian okay. speak in, in, in a, their accent, uh, it will be quite, you'll see, it's very unique, uh, you know. Uh, so I try to sort of mix it up with the British, you know, and try to speak just clearly and um, uh, as, as um, so you can understand it easy, easily. Perfect. Anyways, that, that's good. I'm glad you, you can understand me. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's hear something from Koro. Okay. I am Koro. I am 41. I am from Spain. Now I am in Madrid. Uh, I like to read. I am trying to improve my English because I am searching for uh, work. Excellent. 
Lovely, thank you. I Cora. like to read books. <laughs> <laughs> Toro is a uh, yes, uh, a very um, good. Um, I don't know which which type of books did you like reading? Was it fiction or non-fiction or now novels? now are very uh, now are reading now the classics because classics. the books are very very expensive and not so good. Mm. It's a uh, overproduction happened here in Spain with the really? Yes, it's extremely 25 euros for a book is extremely. Wow. Now I am reading uh, old literature. For example, oh. now I am reading uh, 1984 from George Orwell. Oh wow. Because now is the most readest book in USA, for example. Mm. The most read book in the USA. Yes, because it's a book from '46, but now in the situation is very, very actual. I am now now reading in my. Um, I I have a read group from people. I organize a weekly a read um, session, oh, and now session. we are we are reading 1941. It's very awesome. very interesting. There are a lot of things that are happening now are in this book. Yes, that's mm -hmm. cool, that's cool. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll keep up the good work. <laughs> okay, thank you, Cora. Cecilia. Cora, is it in Spanish or in English? No, I am reading in Spanish. No, no, no. I am the teacher. When I have this session, I have the teacher. I'm trying. No, no. Uh, <laughs> because maybe you were reading it in English. Mm. Is it be better, but no, it's too, too stressed. No. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Okay, right. Um, let me see. Uh, Tamira. Yes. My name is Cecilia. I'm from Uruguay, a small country in South America, between Argentina and Brazil. I know uh, it. <laughs> I love it. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm very I'm very happy that you know my country. Okay. Oh, Many people haven't got the slightest idea what we are. Yeah. All right. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice okay. to meet you too, Sammy. Um, uh, I'm 49. I'm okay. a mother of a 21-year-old boy. I'm an English student teacher. But I also work with teenagers, ages 20, uh, 13, 15. And I've got a group, a practice group of 18 years old. Uh, I love theater, uh, music, singing, dancing. Uh, I love Colingo because I meet people from all over the world and teachers from English speaking countries. And that's all about it. Perfect, perfect. Nice to meet you, Cecilia. <laughs> nice to meet you too. Yeah, thank you. Excellent. That's lovely. Uh, we have a very good class. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> very nice to meet you, Samira. Welcome to the club. Thank you. <laughs> have you been long? How long have you been with Colingo? Is this one of your first classes? Uh, this, no, this is the, sing, uh, the second one. This is the second one, yeah. Okay, so you're a new student with Colingo. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Well, nice to have you on board. Um, okay, let's start. Our topic is science and technology. And um, so I'll, I'll begin with asking you some questions and try. I'm, I'm going to try and elicit some of the uh, grammar focus. So have you met all the teachers at Colingo? Uh, any, any of you? <laughs> Uh, this question for me? Or anyone, all three of oh, you. Oh, oh okay. Uh, you, for me, you are the second one. And uh, yeah, I, I was with you uh, an hour before. And I felt very comfortable with your mm -hmm. accent. So yeah, I want to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I have a big problem with my listening. Uh, so, yeah, so I want to join this class. Excellent. That's cool. Uh, yeah. Makes me very happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about the others, Ceciliao and, and Coro? But what? 
Have you met all the teachers at Tulingo? No, I am trying, but uh, it's very different. This feel uh, I feel in in some classes I feel very good, and in in some classes I feel not so good. I don't know why. <laughs> it's experience. <laughs> but I was I was teacher seven years long in Germany, and now I am experienced. Who the the mm, the teacher is? It is wonderful. Mm. What means or what uh, mm, what is the experience? It's very very different. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So uh, having taught for seven years in Germany, uh, you're experiencing another sort of way of teaching, is it? And you you like it even more now? Yes, I like it. Teaching is the best. Work in the in the world. I think I think so as well. It's and wonderful. It's wonderful. Now I have yeah. literature teaching, but very small groups. I cannot live from teaching. But uh, in German yeah. was a uh, wonderful, wonderful. Oh, it was right. very good. Payet, <laughs> very good, very very good. And mm. uh, it was wonderful in the university and mm. in the schools. It was wonderful. But uh, it, this is, yeah. uh, the teacher need a uh, uh, in yearly a good rest. I think you cannot teaching all the time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You need to you need to but, have breaks. You need yes, to rest. Yes. <laughs> it takes a lot of energy out of you, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, Cecilia is nodding her head. She knows all mm -hmm. about it. You know. Or, for example, yes. to teach more than six hours per day is, is not possible. It's crazy. I know, I know. I mean, one hour is uh, more than yes. six is not good. Yeah, mm -hmm. especially if you're dealing with youth. You know, with youth, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. when I was in in in, um, in Egypt, you know, in mm -hmm. Cairo, I taught at international schools, and I mm -hmm. had all all ages. So I had Oof. from young, you know, primary to up, you know. Um, you know, preps and high school and all that. So it's more to do not just delivering the actual lesson. It's more to do with class management, hmm. student, student management. Mm -hmm. Cecilia knows all about it. Uh, if you have misbehaving students, it's very difficult. They make your life hell. So I've learned a lot. Uh, I, I'm happy. I don't have. I don't have to deal with that here because mm -hmm. we're all we're all adults. Mm -hmm. and, um, but I learned that you know when, especially when you're starting a fresh year, and you're teaching at a school, and you're dealing with kids, let's say, or you know young learners, uh, you, the first few days are the most important days. Mm -hmm. The first Be class is the most important class. <laughs> yes, because the impression mm -hmm. has to be. Uh, I mean, okay, it's good to be friendly, but basically there's this one. Phrase which is common uh, for teachers: Don't smile until Christmas, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or you don't smile. You basically, you do not expose your friendliness too much because mm -hmm. if you do, they think that you are their friend, and then what happens? They take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. You have to be strict from day one because they have to know who's boss. Mm -hmm. Simple as mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. and, I made that mistake once, and I was very friendly, and they all loved me. But then, when it comes to order and discipline, uh, you have to really struggle, you know, because there are always going to be some misbehaving kids. Anyways, so yeah, back to our question, Cecilia. We, uh, we're having such a lovely time, honestly. Though we're not actually progressing in our lesson, <laughs> so we're gonna have to speed it up. Uh, Cecilia, have you met any uh, all of the teachers at Lingo? No, by no means. I think. No? Mm. But you've met quite a few, right? Mm. Since the same yes. part. A... Yes, but no, uh, since we have the new Kalingo, uh, there are <laughs> quite a few I haven't met, especially at my sleeping hours. <laughs> because I do sleep, I do sleep. I Not do, many I do. hours, but I do sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Uh, I see Ken has joined us. Welcome, Ken. Good afternoon. Hello. Good Hello. Afternoon. Hello. Hello. Ken is our friend uh, from Japan, and uh, we have a new student here, Samira, from Algeria, but she's currently in New Orleans, in the States. Uh, anyways, look, guys, I'm gonna rush it now. Uh, 
I want to ask you another question. Okay, maybe Cecilia, I'm just going to choose you. Can you because you have a video on it, we can all see you. So can you pick up two things from your desk, please? And I say what they are. Pencil. This is this. This is a pencil, a pink <laughs> pencil. <laughs> okay. And, Sweet. And that's that's a mate, a mate. What's mate. that? That's that's a mate. That's a mate. That's a mate. Mate tea, yes. Okay, oh, it's tea, right? Okay, that's excellent, excellent. Perfect. You've done everything I wanted you to do. <laughs> yes. If you want, I can do the plurals. <laughs> nice. What I'm eliciting here is, uh, Cecilia, you want to tell us? Yes, they are uh, demonstratives. Yes. So we're going to focus on demonstratives and uh, distributives. Okay, this is what a grammar skill is. Demonstratives and distributives. And, um, yeah, so now our pronunciation here comes again to contrastive stress. We've already done before. So all of you, I think, were there. And I think Koro and Ken, you're very, very uh, much acquainted with um, sorry, contrastive stress. Right, Ken? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A contrast stress? Contrast okay. stress. Do you remember what that is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of. Uh, English has a contrast of stress, Korea contrast of stress. Yeah. Can yeah. you think of an example? Oh, yeah, kind of. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I, I, saw the mo I saw the movie uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. The movie, mov I, movie, I saw movie should be stressed more uh, kind of I mean a uh, uh, content word function word should content words is more stressed than uh, functional function word in, in English yeah okay you get you get it there um, <laughs> uh, I think you, if, I, if, you, if, I, if I give you a sentence you might remember you know okay. it's got to do with a, a contrast between two words and like there's I a Sorry, oh, yes, excuse Samira? Me. Oh, like the example in um, the previous class, you said, I don't like tea, but I like coffee, or something like that. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, oh, okay, yeah. okay. That's yeah, it, that's it. Excellent. Do you remember, mm. Ken? Mm. Yeah? Yes, I remember that. Yes. Yeah, that, so there's two, two words, and there is a higher intonation. So, like Samira said, uh, I don't like tea, but I like coffee. Mm. So tea and coffee. So it is a higher. So I don't like tea, but I like coffee. You know, that wasn't perfect. Mm. But anyways, tea and coffee are the two where, is where the stress is. Mm. And coffee being slightly higher in intonation. Mm. So that's uh, contrasted stress, okay? Uh, I just wanted to, you know, throw that out and make sure we all understand it. Excellent. So... I'm going to move on to the grammar, and we're going to, uh, I'm going to explain certain things now uh, when it comes to our grammar skill. So I'm going to screen share it again. Right on. Okay, so firstly, a demonstrative pronoun replaces a noun. The replaced noun's identity can be understood from the context. It indicates whether the noun is singular or plural and whether it is near or far from the speaker. If you remember when Cecilia was uh, describing her lovely pencil and her cup or mug of tea, mate, mate of tea, um, she said, hmm, this is a pencil, or this is a pen, or this is a pink pen, and that is a cup or mug, or that is tea. So this we use for things that are near, and that for something which is far. That's singular. Now when it comes to plural, right, we say these for something near, and those, this is a typo, there should be an E after S, so those for far. Okay, so there's an E missing here. 
Uh, so some examples. This is a rose, singular, near. That is a daisy, singular, far. These are pretty flowers, plural and near. Those are some big sunflowers, okay, plural and far. <clears throat> yeah? I'm, I'm sure you guys already knew that, yeah? Yeah. Yeah? <clears throat> so let's let's okay. keep going. So secondly, demonstrative pronouns can also be used as demonstrative adjectives. So they are identical, but a demonstrative pronoun stands alone, while a demonstrative adjective qualifies <clears throat> a noun. So here, a demonstrative pronoun would be like this. This tastes good. So we don't have is or are here. So just this tastes good. Or that book looks familiar. So demonstrative adjective plus the noun. So that book okay, looks familiar. <clears throat> Clearly, distributive pronouns are used to indicate all the members of the representative group. Each Every, either, and neither, okay, are called distributive pronouns because they refer to persons or things taken one at a time. Distributive pronouns are always singular and are followed by singular verbs. So each one or each one of you will be assigned a number before the race. Each one of you. So they're always going to be singular. Either of you could win the race. So either of you could win the race, depending on how much you train. Neither of those girls could beat you. <clears throat> yeah, neither of Teacher. those girls. Yes? Uh, excuse me. Uh, the synonym of neither, we can say no one of those uh, girls could beat you. Is it possible to say that? Yeah. You can say none of those girls. Ah, uh, none. Mm -hmm. Okay, none of that. Okay, well, okay. I think we'll, we'll come to that. But in, um, usually when we use neither, okay. it's got to do with two people. So neither of those girls. This one or that one. Okay, okay, okay. okay. But if you say none, none could be more than two. Uh, okay, we're, we're okay. going to cover it now in, the, in a fourth point. Okay. okay so pay okay. attention now in the fourth point. Okay. So either and neither are used to talk about two persons or things, right? Exactly okay. what I just said. So either and neither we use uh, for talking about two persons or two things. To talk about more than two persons or, or more than two things, we use none or no one for neither, and any, all, or every for either. Okay, so okay. so negatively would be none or no one. Okay, this is for more than two people. <clears throat> and if it's uh, positive, then you say any, all, or every. So. All of the dogs at the at, at the dog park need water. Okay. All of the dogs. So it's more than two. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Uh, or none of the dogs feel like sitting in the shade. Alright, Samira? Okay. So if you say neither yeah. or either neither or either is only two two people or two things. If there is okay. more okay. then you use um, you know none or no one or any all or every. Okay, okay, okay. I see, yeah. Then, fifthly, sometimes each and every have the same meaning, but sometimes they are not exactly the same. So, okay. so let's have a look. In this case, they might have the same meaning. So, prices go up each year, or prices go up every year. So, here they have the same meaning, okay, each and every. Okay. Often, they are not exactly the same. Each expresses the idea of one by one. It emphasizes okay. individuality. Every is halfway between each and all. 
it sees things for people as singular, but in a group or in general. So let's have a look at these examples. Every artist is sensitive. So all the artists. Okay. Next, each okay. artist sees things differently. So here it's a specific... It's single word. Yeah, specific artist. So each artist. Okay. okay. Yeah. So here every is uh, it's ge uh, sort of <coughs> generalizing, you know, saying all the artists. And here it's more specific. So each artist artist uh, sees things differently. Then we have every soldier saluted as the president arrived. So every soldier, as in all the soldiers, saluted the president. The president gave each soldier a medal. So here only specific soldiers got medals. Maybe not all of them, but specific soldiers who deserve that not that medal. Okay. So the president okay. gave each soldier a medal. Uh, then each can be used in front of the verb or followed by off. Yeah, so the soldiers each received a medal. Okay, the president spoke to each of the soldiers. So here we use off. Okay. So the soldiers each received a medal. So each is before the actual verb. Or you can come after, but using off. The president spoke to each of the soldiers. Okay, so there are various ways of saying this. Then each is used to talk about two or more things. Um, he was carrying a suitcase in each hand. So two or more okay. things. There was a computer on each desk. So two or more desks. Every is used to emphasize how often something happens. There is a plane to Bangkok every day. When is it happening? Every day. The bus leaves every hour. Okay, so there are plenty of examples here we can use. And finally, Okay, uh, distri distributive pronouns can also be used as distributive adjectives. Note that distributive adjectives are immediately followed by nouns. So each child received lots of gifts for Christmas. Excuse me, teacher. Yeah? We yeah. can say the bus leaves uh, uh, each hour. Sorry? The bus Which leaves? Means we can, is it possible to say the bus leaves each hour, which means each, um, yeah, each uh, single hour there is a bus? Mm -hmm. You could say that, but it wouldn't necessarily have the same meaning as saying the bus leaves every hour. When you say the bus leaves every hour, it means every hour of the 24 hours a day. If you say the bus leaves each hour, uh, okay. Uh, it might it might be a bit more specific. You know, you might uh, have a different time time frame by saying uh, the bus leaves each hour, and then you might want to continue by saying something uh, or adding something to that. You know, if you say the bus leaves every hour, that means it's general. Okay. 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 Um, okay. Is that okay? Uh, yeah, 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 thank you. Okay, and uh, like we said, um, yeah, each child received lots of gifts for Christmas, and either road leads to the railway station. Okay, so here it's, it's telling us that um, the dis distributive adjectives are immediately followed by nouns. So, either road, so the road, the noun is followed by the distributive adjective. Child, the noun is followed by each. So that's quite a lot to uh, chew at once, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, so let's, how about we practice a little bit? Let's see. Mm -hmm.
Are there any questions or anyone wants to say something? No. Or Just to be maybe... sure. <laughs> if possible. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is it either at the last sentence? I can't see it now. But um, does uh, either mean both? Well, yeah. Yeah, oh, either yeah exactly. Yes, yes. Road, yeah, saying road. there are two roads. Yeah. Remember, either two. Uh, it's, it has to be two. Yeah. So it says either road leads to the railway station. So okay. if you take this road or that road, you will come to the railway station. So both road leads. Both roads. Yeah. Okay. You can say that. You can say that. Absolutely. So both roads lead to the railway station. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Maybe we should uh, let me read the article and hopefully I think I have some good questions we can um, answer and use our skill. So let's see. And it's got to do with Japan. Ken, maybe you can confirm if this article is telling the truth. Okay, I'll put the link in, in the chat. The link is in the chat if you want to open it in your own window. So, all right, we're talking about um, fax machines. Okay, fax machines in China. In Japan. Uh, despite high tech, yeah, despite high tech, Japan sticks to the fax machine. Is that true, uh, Ken? Mm. A lot I'm of Japanese sure. use uh, fax machines still. I'm not Do you have sure one at all? Uh, yeah, <laughs> my phone has fax machine, but I, I rarely go. use it. <laughs> yeah. But I anyway, think... if I, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Send the document to the offshore kind of company or you know some offshore uh, place. Yep. I would use fax machine, not the email. There you yeah, go. That's so true. it's very common. So so we're gonna find out why. And uh, by the way, is uh, Hamoud joined us? Welcome back, Hamoud. Thank you, teacher. Excellent. I'm just gonna read the article, Hamoud, and uh, then we're gonna discuss some of these. All right. So. Japan is one of the most technologically advanced countries in the world. It takes a global lead in producing robots and providing its population with broadband internet. But you may be surprised to find out that a remnant uh, of old-fashioned technology, the fax machine, still remains popular in the land of the ra rising sun. The Japanese buy over a million fax machines every year. Communications experts say that the machine has a long tradition in Japan and offices and businesses simply do not want to get rid of it. Even half of Japan's private homes own a fax machine. One of the reasons for sticking to a traditional form of communication may be the fact that the Japanese population is growing older and elderly workers and businessmen are afraid of taking on something new. In certain areas of communication, Japan has been overtaken by rivals China and South Korea. Many companies and government offices still rely on the paper facts because they think having a physical copy of a document is more secure and it cannot get lost. Even banks use faxes because their customers want them to. In an age of computer hacking and cybercrime, People simply think that faxes are safer. When an earthquake and tsunami struck northern Japan in 2011, many office buildings were destroyed and company owners bought fax machines to replace the ones that were damaged by the tragic event. In most cases, faxes are handwritten because the Japanese language has over 2,000 symbols and character, symbols and characters, and many people find it quicker to write than to type. Fax machines become as common as TV sets in the 1980s. Back then, the country produced over 90% of the world's machines, most of which were exported all over the world. 30 years later, some Japanese still don't have an email address, but chances are they have a fax machine. And here is the magical fax machine. 
<laughs> yes. Um, we have one as well. Uh, it's, I didn't buy it personally, but uh, it's still here because my father-in-law bought it. So, anyways, some of the vocabulary which might be useful. Let's have a look in case you didn't know some of them. Cybercrime, criminal activity using a computer. Um, what else was there? Sorry? Oh. A remnant is a leftover or remains. So what is left off? That's a remnant. And yeah, so that's it. So, oh, I thought that was interesting. How about you guys? So do you agree, Ken? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you agree yeah, with the article, yeah? Yeah, kind of. For example, I I have to uh, uh, send copy of some, some official document to backup. Yeah, I would use uh, fax. Maybe the of officials, uh, you know, says you, a fax machine or you know, kind of snail mail is available for accept this copy of documents. That's also uh, often happen in Japan. Yes. By, by email. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Personally, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I would also use fax machines. I think it's quite, <clears throat> it's good, especially if you have a good fax machine that, that can fax papers or single pa documents quickly. Um, and there are countries, you know, that, you know, are very fond of using fax machines. So, okay, let me ask you guys some questions now about <clears throat> this article or in general. Try to use our, our grammar skill if you can, you know, and um, incorporate it into the answer. So, how many fax machines do the Japanese buy per annum? It's mentioned in this article. Let's see who finds the answer oh, first. Oh, million fax, a million fax machines every day, every year. Yes. Oh, every day. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Every no, day no, every year. <laughs> every year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you almost said every day. Yeah, every year. That's absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Over, over a million. Okay. Yeah, so it's more than a million. Excellent. Um, now. That's the answer, pretty much. So I'll move on to the next question. Well done, Samira. How many private homes in Japan own a fax machine? More than 90% of the population there. Mm -hmm. More than 90%. Let's see. Uh, teacher, I didn't understand the question. Uh, OK, so how many private homes in Japan own a fax machine. Uh, private homes. Yeah, private oh, homes. Okay. Private homes. Yeah, I don't think it's ninety percent. It's there's another that's another statistic. These other questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hamoud, what we said is that the country produced over ninety percent of no, the world's not machines. The correct so they produced, yeah. No, a uh, heaven. A uh, half of Japan private homes are have fax machine. Yes. Yeah. So that's good. So how now? How would you use a a um a grammar skill here, a demonstrative mm. or distributive? Which one would you use? Mm. So we know that a, every uh, or half. Sorry. Half of Japanese Japanese private homes own a fax machine. machine so, yeah. so convert it now, you gotta use a bit of math. <laughs> hmm. With each, but I don't know who I mm -hmm. how is it how each private home or no, each half. for two. Half is each for two. I don't know how okay. I made the okay. sentence. Yeah. Can anyone help, Karo? Uh, uh, well, each house? Does it make sense? 
Mm, that would be that would be um, yeah. It, it says half half of Japan's private homes. So H1 like, fund two. H1 fund two. Or you're getting like there. You're getting there, but I think each is the wrong word to use. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. mm. Amira, what were you going to say? Bravery, no. Okay, I'll I'll give you a clue. You have to I'll use the clue. word second. Second home. So something before second. First. <laughs> no, but <laughs> <laughs> good one. Not it's in that sense. So each second <laughs> Japan's private homes home a fact. Each second, no, no. You're on the right track, but each is the wrong one to use. What's the other one? Every second. <laughs> every, every, yeah. Every, every, wow. Every, every second. Photo. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Every second home or private every home. second. Okay. Owns a fax machine in Japan. That's it. That's what I'm after. Well done. Uh, okay. Let me see. What's the next one? All right, so, okay, uh, if Colingo held a competition for students to win one of the latest Panasonic fax machines, who would have a chance of winning? Me. <laughs> <laughs> every, ah, every, no. every yeah. Japanese student would. Really? <laughs> <laughs> You're being nationalistic. Why Japanese only? <laughs> oh, every other every other student who's not Japanese would because yeah. the Japanese would have one. I wish uh, I had a chance, but yeah, look at the question. If Colingo held a competition for students to win one of the latest Panasonic fax machines, who would have a chance of winning? So. Me, would I have a chance? Give me an answer. No, you yeah. oh, if okay. the competition for the English, maybe you, you would win. Oh, thank you. So, <laughs> but in this case, Alan has no, no chance. Yes, okay. And uh, so, what about you guys? We would. Okay, well, give me an answer. <laughs> Each student, but for teachers and ja and uh, mm. and and Japanese students would have a chance. You think a better chance? Yes, would have a better chance. It depends what the competition is about. You know, if it's about um, you know, how to use a, a fax machine, maybe that would have <laughs> a better chance because they use it a lot more. Maybe yes. in other countries. <laughs> but yeah, so what other way can you can you answer? What other demonstrative can you use? Every so every, every, every we can say will have it. those students from uh, Japanese from Japan. From Japan. Yeah, Hamoud saying something nice. So those um, those uh, those students from Japan would have a great chance of winning. Yes, the greatest chance. Or the greatest, yes. I think. What else could you say? Samira, I think you want something. I don't know, but for me, uh, the idea is to say uh, every uh, every student will have a chance of winning. Yes. Good. You could also say all of the students at at Lingo have a chance of winning, yeah? Okay. This is another way. Or we can say every, yeah. Okay, let's every have a look. Every single student. Every single student. Or you can say each and every student. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's another way. That, ha that wasn't mentioned in the grammar that we covered, but you can say each and every student has a chance of winning. 
we use this uh, this structure to emphasize our substance. Yeah, it's it, it brings more emphasis, uh, okay. or basically saying each and every student has like an equal chance. They all have opportunity to win. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. like putting more emphasis on the students. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. Uh, should I ask you another one? Okay. Pretend, pretend you are showing us the different types of devices we can use to send a document. You know, at the beginning, I asked Cecilia to pick up two things from her desk. Yeah. Now pretend you are, you know, uh, showing us. Uh, okay, you, you know, you have a few devices there, and you're telling us about them. Yeah, Cecilia, go ahead. You want to try? <laughs> no, 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 no. I was just pretending. <laughs> I thought you were dancing. <laughs> uh, the fl flamingo. You dancing the flamingo? <laughs> anyone, anyone wants to try? First, you have to think of, okay, what devices can we use uh, to send a document? And it doesn't have to be physical document. Go ahead, Cecilia. You're very eager to speak. <laughs> we have to hurry up. We're already over the time. I have to assess you guys. Mm -hmm. Quick. Yes, your, your wife is going to pull your ear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she already came knocking. <gasps> what a shame. Now she's using the other. Uh, see, you're missing out on her class. Oh, so I don't want to miss her class. I don't. Okay. So basically, okay, I'll help you guys. Um, let's say, oh, Cecilia, you wanna say, you wanna say it? Yes, yes, yes. Go on. Uh, you can. Uh, we can send them through uh, this uh, notebook. <laughs> yes. We can send them. Uh, through that fax over there. Oh, so nice. uh, We can send them through uh, those uh, telefaxes, old fashioned, over there. And we can send them through the delivery boy over there. Excellent. Oh, very nice. Delivery boy, yeah. Post. I don't know. <laughs> May, mail. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's good. Very nice. You've used everything correctly. Uh, Come okay, on, the rest that. of the class, help me, help me. No, that's good. <laughs> I don't think there's any other way or any other means of sending a document. <clears throat> so Come on, a dog, a pigeon, something else. Yeah, you could use your phone, maybe take a photo of it, scan it. I mean, instead of scanning, you can take a photo of the document and then email it. You can do that as well. All right, look, I'm going to have to quickly assess you, so I'll, I'll ask each and every one of you uh, a question. Well, I'll give you a word, and I want you to form a sentence. So, um, Samira, let's start with you from the right. Yeah. Uh, give me a sentence using each, please. Uh, if you want to send uh, each single document you can use that device it's very useful okay so correct? if you want to yeah if you want to send each document yeah I don't think you, you have need, for example yeah. if you, you have, want to send <laughs> each, uh, each single document you have you can use that device it's very useful Excellent. So if you want to send each document, you can use that device. Yes. Lovely, lovely. I'm happy with that. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Samira, Koro? Yes. yes. Mm. Um, <clears throat> okay, use either. Either in your sentence, please. I... Either. Mm. Either... Mm, 
person on the concert was singing? No. No. Either hey one moment. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, a, a, either was happy in the concert, for example. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Either of them or either of. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, so either. You know, mm -hmm. when, when do we use either? To some persons are I agree or are included, no? Yeah, how many people do, do are we talking about? Two. Yes, excellent. So, mm. so you can say either one. Either one, okay. Was yeah. happy in the, con in the concert, for example. Mm. Or yeah. either one have a car is better either one have a car in this fam in this couple okay either one of the couples okay maybe you want to say you want to say here uh, both both of the couples mm -hmm. um, either one of the couples maybe you want to use a verb have or a has, I don't know. Yeah. So or you can say either one of the uh, couples, mm -hmm. or either one of the uh, people or persons mm -hmm. can drive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Of the person can, can drive. drive. A car. Mm -hmm. So if you, for example, asking which one of you can drive, mm -hmm. or which one, which one of you wants to drive. Okay, okay. You know, which one you can drive? Either one can drive the car. Mm -hmm. Either one of them can drive the car. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you. Now, Sorry. no, that's fine, that's fine, no problem. Mm -hmm. This is not, not the easiest one. <clears throat> so, mm -hmm. Cecilia, can you make a sentence using neither? Uh, neither of them uh, swim. Neither of them swim. Uh, neither of them swim uh, uh, 200 uh, yards. They only swim uh, 100 yards. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about past tense? So neither, no, they or, don't, neither one they of don't them. They don't swim. They don't swim. Ah, they can't. They, okay. So they neither can, one of them can swim. Neither of them can swim 200 yards. They shall swim 100 yards. I see. That's good. That's better. Well done. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Ken, mm -hmm. give me a sentence using either as well. Either. Mm. Uh, either of you can. Uh, either of you can drive. Yeah, try to use another word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, more, more sentence. Yeah, yeah, because uh, we'll either use of you that. can <laughs> drive because either of you uh, have uh, driver's license. Yes, yes. Or either of what? Yes, good. Either one of them. Either of them um, has a driving yeah, license yeah. or driver's license. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to have to end the class, guys. We've gone over, far okay. over. So thank you very much. I really enjoyed it. Nice to see you all again. And nice to meet you, Samira. And uh, hope to see you guys soon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Nice to see you guys. <laughs>